I am officially running for President of the United States. And we are going to make our country great again. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie several... O'Donnell. I'll tell you what. In the Middle East, we have people chopping the heads off Christians. We have people chopping the heads off many other people. We have things that we have never seen before as a group. We have never seen before what's happening right now. The medieval times, I mean, we studied medieval times. Not since medieval times have people seen what's going on. I would bring back waterboarding, and I'd bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. <laughs> we have to stop with political correctness. We have to get down to creating a country that's not going to have the kind of problems that we've had with people flying planes into the World Trade Centers, with the, with the shootings in California, with all the problems all over the world. I just left Indonesia, bomb, 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 bomb. We have to find out what's going on. I said temporarily. I didn't say permanently. I said temporarily. And I have many great Muslim friends. And some of them, I will say not all, have called me and said, Donald, thank you very much. You're exposing an unbelievable problem, and we have to get to the bottom of it. And unlike President Obama, where he refuses even to use the term of what's going on, he can't use the term for whatever reason. And if you can't use the term, you're never going to solve the problem. My Muslim friends, some, said, thank you very much. We'll get to the bottom of it. But we have a serious problem. And we can't be the stupid country anymore. We're laughed at all over the world. We have tremendous has been just sucked out of our country by China. China says they don't have that good a control over North Korea. They have tremendous control. I deal with the Chinese all of the time. I do tremendous business. The largest bank in the world is in one of my buildings in Manhattan. I deal with them. They tell me. They have total, absolute control, practically, of North Korea. They are sucking trillions of dollars out of our country. They're rebuilding China with the money they take out of our country. I would get on with China. Let China solve that problem. They can do it quickly and surgically. That's what we should do with North Korea. Jeb doesn't really believe I'm unhinged. He said that very simply because he has failed in this campaign. It's been a total disaster. Nobody cares. And frankly, I'm the most solid person up here. I built a tremendous company. And all I want to do is make America great again. I don't want our country to be taken away from us. And that's what's happening. The policies that we've suffered under other presidents have been a disaster for our country. We want to make America great again. And Jeb, in all fairness, he doesn't believe that. Thank you. Mr. Trump, what would you say to Diane Foley? Should families be allowed to raise money for ransom? Well, I, I know Diane Foley very well. Uh, her husband and uh, these are tremendous people. Uh, I spoke for them. Uh, I've raised a lot of money for the foundation. I fully understand uh, James, one of the, that was really the first that we saw really visually so, so horrible. Uh, and I will tell you, though, with all of that being said, you cannot negotiate this way with terrorists. If you do, you're going to have many, many more James Foley's. Uh, James Foley was a great young man. His parents are incredible people. They've done such a good job since his, since his death. Of any kind in America? No. I am a Second Amendment person. If we had guns in California on the other side, where the bullets went in the different direction, you wouldn't have 14 or 15 people dead right now. If even in Paris, if they had guns on the other side going in the opposite direction, you wouldn't have 130 people plus dead. So the answer is no. And what Jeb said is absolutely correct. We have a huge mental health problem in this country. We're closing hospitals. We're closing wards. We're closing so many because the states want to save money. We have to get back into looking at what's causing. You know, the guns don't pull the trigger. It's the people that pull the trigger. And we have to find out what is going on. We have to protect.
our Second Amendment. And you cannot do this. And certainly what Barack Obama was doing with the executive order. He doesn't want to get people together. You know, the old fashioned way where you get Congress, you get the Congress, you get the Senate, you get together, you do legislation. He just writes out an order, executive order. That's a 35% tariff on Chinese goods. And that's wrong. They were wrong. It's the New York Times. They're always wrong. Well, <laughs> they were wrong. You never said it because no, they provided what I said, I had an editorial remarks. Board I would use, they were asking me what to do about North Korea. China, they don't like to tell us, but they have total control just about of North Korea. They can solve the problem of North Korea if they wanted to. But they taunt us. They say, well, we don't really have control. Without China, North Korea doesn't even eat. China is ripping us on trade. They're devaluing their currency and they're killing our companies. Thousands and thousands, you look at the number of companies and the number in terms of manufacturing and plants that we've lost, 50,000 because of China. So now, you never wait, wait a minute, putting we've a lost, tariff on we've lost anywhere money. between four and seven million jobs because of China. What I said this, we have very unfair trade with China. We're going to have a trade deficit of $505 billion this year with China. A lot of that is because they devalue their currency. What I said to the New York Times is that we have great power, economic power over China. And if we wanted to use that, and the amount and where the 45 percent comes in, that would be the amount based on their devaluations that we should get, that we should get. What I'm saying is this, I'm not saying we do it, but if they don't start treating us fairly and stop devaluing and let their currency rise so that our companies can compete and we don't lose all of these millions of jobs that we're losing, I would certainly start taxing goods that come in from China. Who the hell has to lose $505 uh, no, billion dollars a year? I'm sorry, sir, you, 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 you lost, but I, I do want to understand that. Well, it's not that complicated, uh, actually. Then I apologize, okay. but then I want to understand if you don't want a 45 percent tariff, you say that wasn't the figure, would you be open or are you open to slapping a higher tariff on Chinese goods of any sort to go back at them? OK, just so you understand, I know so much about trade with China. Carl Icahn today, as you know, endorsed me. Many businessmen want to endorse me. I know, me. but that's Carl said, no, no, but he's somebody that these are the kind of people that we should use uh, to negotiate, not tariff? the kind of people that we have who are political hacks who don't know what they're doing. And we have problems like this. So these are the kind of people we should use our best and our finest. Right, now, on that tariff. Now, yes no? No, here's what I'm saying. China. We, they send their goods in. We don't tax. They do whatever they want to do. They do whatever they do. Okay. When we do business with China, they tax us. You don't know it. They tax us. I have many friends that deal with China. They can't deal. Number one, they don't want the product. And when they finally get the product, it is taxed. And if you look at what happened with Boeing, and if you look at what happened with so many companies that deal. So we don't have an equal playing field. I'm saying absolutely. We don't have to continue to lose $505 billion as a trade deficit for the privilege of dealing with China. I'm a free trader. I believe it. But we have to be smart, and we have to use smart people to negotiate. I have the largest bank in the world as a tenant of mine. I sell tens of millions of dollars. I love China. I love the Chinese people. But they laugh themselves. They can't believe how stupid the American leadership is. So you're open to a tariff? I'm totally open to a tariff. If they don't treat us fairly, hey, their whole trade thing is tariff. You can't deal in China with that tariff. They do it to us. We don't do it. It's not fair trade. Neil, Neil, can I, let me, can say, I bring, let me say one thing about this? I, 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 okay. I, I'm, a, I'm a free trader. I supported NAFTA, I believe, in the PTT because it's important those countries in Asia are an interface against. NBC Wall Street Journal just came out with a poll headline. Trump way up, crews going down. I mean, so don't, so you can't, you can't, I, they don't like the Wall Street Journal, they don't like NBC, but I like the poll. And frankly, <laughs> it just came out. And in Iowa now, as you know, Ted, in the last three polls, I'm beating you. So, you know, you shouldn't misrepresent how well you're doing with the polls. You don't have to say that. In fact, I was all for you until you started doing that because that's a misrepresentation. Number one. Number two. This isn't me saying it. I don't care. I think I'm going to win fair and square. I don't have to win this way. Thank you. Lawrence Tribe and numerous from Harvard, of Harvard, 
said that there is a serious question as to whether or not Ted can do this, okay? There are other attorneys that feel, and very, very fine constitutional attorneys, that feel that because he was not born on the land, he cannot run for office. Here's the problem. We're running, we're running. He does great. I win. I choose him as my vice presidential candidate, and the Democrats sue because we can't take him along for the ride. I don't like that, okay? I think it's very sad that CNN leads Jeb Bush, Governor Bush, down a road by starting off virtually all of the questions. Mr. Trump this, Mr. I think it's very sad. And frankly, I watch, I think it's very sad. And frankly, I watched the first debate and the first long number of questions were, Mr. Trump said this, Mr. Trump said that, Mr. Trump. These poor guys, although I must tell you, Santorum, good guy. Governor Huckabee, good guy. They were very nice and I respect them greatly. But I thought it was very unfair that virtually the entire early portion of the debate was Trump this, Trump that, in order to get ratings, Mr. I Trump, guess. it's not in order CNN. To get ratings, it, Mr. Trump, I, guess. I was I on just CNN think it's last very night watching Excuse me. You. I think it's very unprofessional. But, but it, wasn't, it wasn't CNN. It was me. I watched well, you last night for 16 minutes. Watch, I think it's, it's very not unprofessional. CNN. It's not CNN. All it's right. America's watching you. Okay, fine. It's America's watching you. So I was, I, was, I was mentioned so I can bring up something, I think, right? Look, the simple fact is, if you think this is tough and you're not being treated this fairly, isn't tough and easy. imagine I wish what it's going to be like I dealing with Putin or dealing with President Xi or dealing with the, the Islamic terrorism that oh, yeah. exists. This is a tough business oh, to run for oh, president. Oh, no, you're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader that is pr real principled. Tough. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting Jeb, yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at 3, so Doesn't so matter. far I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. So far I'm doing better. You know, you started off over here, Jeb. You're moving over further and further. Pretty soon you're going to be off the end.